Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we are in the desert of New Mexico at the Very Large Array. And I want to talk about Contact by Carl Sagan, 1985. The Very Large Array in New Mexico is the key to our chances for success. With its 27 linked radio telescopes, we can search more accurately than at any other conventional facility. Now, we've already gotten the preliminary approval to buy the telescope time from the government. Well, I'm back home from my trip through the southwest of the United States with lots of great memories, and one of the best was the Very Large Array in New Mexico. Even the drawstrings are tie-dye. When traveling into New Mexico, I was planning on seeing Chris from Liminal Spaces and he suggested we should stop at the Very Large Array on our way to Albuquerque. In some ways, I found the Very Large Array to be a liminal space of its own. It was awe-inspiring and mind-blowing to think what these 27 radio telescopes were seeing and detecting in the sky. It's as if there was a connection over billions and billions of years, as Carl Sagan would like to say. And talking about Carl Sagan, this is where they filmed Contact, a Robert Zemeckis film, following on the heels of his last film that he directed, Forrest Gump, and Jodie Foster in one of her most famous roles, and a young Matthew McConaughey. There was star power, the director, and an amazing story from Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan was an American astronomer, planetary scientist, and science communicator. His best-known scientific contribution is his research on the possibility of extraterrestrial life, including experimental demonstration of the production of amino acids from basic chemicals by exposure to light. He assembled the first physical messages sent into space, the Pioneer Plaque, and the Voyager Golden Record which were universal messages that could potentially be understood by any extraterrestrial intelligence that might find them. He co-wrote and narrated the award-winning 1980 television series Cosmos, A Personal Journey. Cosmos has been seen by at least 500 million people in 60 countries. Sagan also wrote a science fiction novel published in 1985 called Contact, which became the basis for the 1997 film Contact. Unfortunately, he was not able to see the completed film as he passed away December 20th, 1996 at the age of 62. There's a paragraph from the author's note at the end of the book that I'd like to read to you. This book has grown out of a treatment for a motion picture that Anne Druin and I wrote in 1980 and 81. Linda Obst and Gentry Lee facilitated that early phase. At every stage in the writing of this book, I have benefited tremendously from Anne Druin from the earliest conceptualization of the plot and central characters to the final galley proofing. What I learned from her in the process is what I cherish most about the writing of this book. Anne Drian is an American documentary producer and director specializing in the communication of science. She co-wrote the series Cosmos with Carl Sagan, and they married in 1981. This is the partnership that produced the novel Contact. Now, I want to give you a basic review of the novel, one of my typical type reviews, but at the end of this video, where I have a thumbnail and that musical sting, following that, I will have a spoiler area where I'd like to talk about the differences between the novel and the film. This will include information from both of those that will be considered spoilers. I'll also tell you what I think of the film compared to the novel. So let's talk first about the novel. The novel opens with stories of a young Eleanor Arroway. She is very close to her father. Her father has a strong influence on her, particularly in science. And when he passes away while she's in elementary school, it just deepens her love for science, for astronomy. Fast forward a number of years and she's become a scientist, a radio astronomy scientist. She is promoting research in SETI, 
S-E-T-I, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. She has some time given to her for this research at the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico. But that funding is taken away. She seeks private investors and buys time eventually in the deserts of New Mexico. We have a name check here for the very large array, but the actual site in the novel is a fictional site called Argus, and it has many more radio telescopes than the very large array. During her time at Argus, she finds a signal, a signal which contains prime numbers in order. It comes from the area of the star system Vega. Now, for those who haven't seen the movie or read the novel, let me just say its name is Contact. So we have something very interesting happening here. Messages are received and eventually deciphered. There's a very surprising first message, actually video, that they decipher. But there's messages buried within messages. Eventually, Eleanor Arroway will seek contact with those giving the message. This is a mind-blowing novel of hard science. There are many long passages about science. There are also long passages about faith in science. Arroway is a skeptic, yet we have characters within here who believe that there is a God, that there is some sort of construction to this universe. There's also a lot of political intrigue as this message is received all around the world. Can it be controlled? What are its implications? This is a high concept novel, hard science fiction that reads like a bestseller. I think the scientific explanations and all the faith versus science passages could have been tightened up to make this an even faster novel. At 430 pages, I think it was just a bit too long. That said, it was a best-selling novel in the vein of Michael Crichton. I give the novel 7.5 out of 10. It is a fascinating contribution to science fiction. So if you've read the novel or watched the film, stay tuned after this thumbnail and musical sting. Otherwise, keep reading. All right, if you're still here, let's talk about the novel and the film. I think that the film distills the novel and its themes and ideas really well. First, though, let's talk about some of the differences. The first difference I want to talk about is family. In the film, we see young Eleanor Arroway, and there's a beautiful relationship with her father. But eventually, we see that her father is sick, and he passes away. She is now an orphan because her mother died in childbirth. In the novel, we do have the father passing away while Eleanor is at an early age. But her mother lives, and her mother towards the end of the novel, is in an old folks' home. It appears that she has dementia. A second big difference is colleagues. In the film, it's very important that Palmer Josh, a person representing Faith, a minister, is inserted into the story at the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico. There is a chemistry with Matthew McConaughey and Jodie Foster. A relationship is formed. This relationship becomes a core piece of the film. In the novel, Palmer Josh is much more of a minor character and isn't in a romantic relationship with Ellie. We also see many more colleagues in the novel. In particular, there is one from Russia who we call Vege. He becomes very close to Eleanor, but in a respectful, platonic way. And that brings me to the next difference I'd like to talk about. Here we're getting into big spoilers. The message provides him with a blueprint to build a machine which they believe is going to transport them. In the film, we only see one passenger in this machine, but in the novel, there are five passengers, and Vege is one of them. So there's a lot more development of all these characters that take a ride with Ellie. And the last difference that I want to note is a really big omission from the novel into the film. When Ellie is having an experience with the alien intelligence, they talk about messages that have been left for them. Even though this is a very advanced civilization she's communicating with, they too believe there's messages left for them. In fact, the transport system in space was left for them. And where are they looking for messages? In mathematics. In pi. What if pi, if you continued on through the billions and billions of numbers started to be a coded message, a coded message from that which created the universe. I told you there would be big spoilers. 
That concept is fascinating and continues on after Ellie has returned. Now, similar to the film, there is this rejection that this event actually even happened. But there is this lingering thought that perhaps there is a message in mathematics for those civilizations which can reach a level to read and decipher it. That's simply mind-blowing and my favorite part of the novel. Now, in terms of the film, you might be surprised by this, but I actually think it's better than the novel. I think it distills all the elements and brings them into a nice, tight story. All the major themes are present, and there is a deep emotional connection that is made with Jodie Foster's character, her father, and with Palmer Josh. I give the film 8.5 out of 10. Recommended. So if you watch this far, feel free to comment below about some of these thoughts, some of these differences, and some of the strengths you see in the novel and the film. If you have something that's a spoiler, you might want to just start the comment with spoiler and then enter a few times so that we can put your comment or idea down lower so someone doesn't see it. So until next time, keep your eyes on the sky and keep reading.